Hello and welcome back to the channel. I got this telescope for free the way you see it right here. It's in a Chiquita banana box. I recently bought something off a club member who was downsizing his home and as I was walking away with what I purchased from him he pointed to the corner of the garage and said do you want that? And it was this. And you know I really didn't feel the need to take on anything else right now because I got a lot of stuff here at the time. But you know what? I figured I could review this thing and maybe give it away or donate it to somebody. And I said, sure, I'll take it. So let's put it together and take a look. Okay, so what is it? Well, it's a Galileo CT1380. Not to be confused with a Galileo scope. That's the kit that's popular with beginners, but rather simply Galileo. So I wasn't expecting a super high-end product here given that it was free, but many of us got our start with this brand from a certain cable television shopping program didn't exactly endear the brand to experienced amateur astronomers. And just because of that, I completely lost track of this company and didn't pay any attention to them. But in recent years, I've had people tell me to check these guys out again. They appear to have upped their game a little bit. So this is a telescope. I have never seen one of these before. It's, uh, you know, it looks like a normal reflector. But as I put this thing together, some surprises started to come that my way. The surprises started with how well built this thing is. This is almost 24 pounds. It's a lot more heavy and substantial than you might think given that it's a budget telescope. So just so you know, there's a lot of metal in here in this mount, including the tripod legs, including the eyepiece tray, the locking nut, as well as the threads to raise and lower the tripod are also made of metal. And just for comparison, the Takahashi Starbase 80 that I had in here recently, a lot of those parts were made of plastic. So the surprises continue here. This looks like it might be an equatorial mount. You've got a counterweight shaft and a counterweight on it, but this is actually an alt as mount. It's counterweighted to compensate for the weight of the optical tube. They didn't have to do that, but they did it, and it's a good thing they did. There's actually a slot for another one over here. You'll see another one. It looks sort of like a pendulum arrangement here, but I found that one of these counterweights was plenty to balance the optical tube. So another surprise here, we actually do have slow motion controls on both axes. You have one for the altitude, and you have one here on the azimuth. I don't know how useful those things are going to be, especially the one on the azimuth, which has a limited amount of travel in it. Some other nice things. The plastic parts on here tend to be of relatively high quality. This tube ring, for example, is made of plastic, but it's a pretty thick, substantial plastic. It's a better tube ring than the Orion Space Probe 3 that you saw me review earlier, and it's a better tube ring than the one on the Star Blast. You've got a collimatable mm -hmm. lens cell in the back, Viracell rather, and you've got collimatable secondary here, although a little bit strange here. The secondary spider is actually built into the end ring. A little bit unusual. You better hope you don't break that thing because I don't know if you're going to get any replacements. You've got a red dot finder. I like that as opposed to one of these cheap 5x24s that you get that's stopped down inside. You have a two inch focuser, another surprise and a eyepiece, it's a 32 millimeter, and it says giant astroscopic eyepiece. Astroscopic? Well, okay, we'll give them that. It's a piece of marketing. Okay, so the optical tube looks like one of these generic four and a half inch F8 Newtonians that you see from Chinese suppliers and which are brand labeled by so many different people. But it's actually not. I thought that's what this was, but the aperture is actually a 120 instead of a 114. A little bit extra aperture here. And on the focuser, it says catadioptric. And I thought, catadioptric? How is this a catadioptric? And then I looked in the focuser. There's a lens in there. It's a Bird Jones type design. We were doing so well. So I don't know why cheap telescope makers keep insisting on doing this. The presence of the lens in there boosts the focal ratio, thus raising the magnification, making it harder to find, and putting more stress on the mount to hold the optical tube. It is the worst possible thing you can do to a beginner.
Now, one of the functions of that lens is to clean up aberrations at the edges, especially of these mirrors, which tend to be cheap mirrors, but you know what? Just, it's okay, let it happen. It's a cheap scope. I can live with a few aberrations. This thing just makes it worse. The presence of the lens also makes these telescopes difficult to impossible to collimate. And so it's just a bad thing all around. I wish they would just leave these things alone, make it a natural Newtonian. I can live with a little bit of edge distortion. Okay, so I thought I'd show some of the accessories here up close. So again, this is the 32 millimeter giant astroscopic eyepiece. But I'll tell you, there's a lot of heft to this. There's obviously a lot of metal and glass here. This is a decent quality eyepiece. It doesn't specify what the design is, but I suspect looking through it that it is a Kellner. No problem there with a telescope at this price point. It does have two other eyepieces. This is a 20 and this is a six. And by now you know if you see the letters H and or R next to an eyepiece, they are useless. These things weigh next to nothing and that's probably what they're worth. This is a inch and a quarter to two inch adapter, one of the cheapest ones I've ever seen. And that's okay at this price point as well. Okay, so the finder here is a simple red dot reflex sight, and it's a little bit on the cheap side. This is okay. I mean, at this price point, you can't really expect a lot. Again, it's much better than a cheap 5x24 that's been stopped down that you see in a lot of other inexpensive telescopes. And also, the cheapness of the finder stands out only because the rest of this is fairly well made. So I have had one person ask me, this looks like it's on a base, it's on a sliding dovetail base here that is similar to other inexpensive telescopes. And I had a question, will other red dot finders fit on this thing? So here is one here, as yeah, Orion Easy Finder 2, and it looks like this will slide on and it does, but no matter how much you tighten down on these screws, it never actually grips this thing. This is slightly too large or that is slightly too small, depending on your point of view. So no, it will not fit. You are stuck with this finder the way it is. And by the way, is, it, is that an apostrophe after the S of Mar Mars's, Mars's eye finder scope? Oh boy, should have had a grammar check there. So the manual, it's decent. It's okay. It's got some assembly instructions. There are no exaggerated claims made and it seems pretty responsibly written. The only thing is there are no <laughs> observing tips whatsoever, so you're stuck learning that by yourself. Okay, so a little bit more about the background of this particular model. You can't get these anymore, but they were available for some time, it looks like around 10 years ago, from a number of sources, including that high-end telescope retailer known as Costco. Yes, you could get these at Costco wholesale for somewhere between $150 and $200. I've actually had this thing for a while now, and I do see them popping up on Craigslist and on eBay, and I actually found one at a local thrift shop for $40. I thought about buying it, except it was missing the eyepieces and the finder. Okay, so how does this perform? Well, I'll tell you, my Pre-judging of this thing, it wasn't good, just based upon the brand name and what it is. But of course, this is why we do the review to find out. But I'll tell you, how is it? It doesn't suck. I mean, this it's okay. It's, it's actually all right. And I'll tell you, there's it doesn't suck for two reasons. Number one, the mount is decent. It holds things steady. It tracks reasonably well. A little bit stiff, stiff in the azimuth axis, but it's not bad. And the second reason is the eyepiece. You're not getting the junky 0.965 inch eyepieces. You're getting a generous two inch eyepiece with a decent field of view and decent sharpness throughout. If you have a good mount and good eyepieces, it covers up a lot of sins. This is where a lot of budget telescopes fall down. Now, is this perfect? Of course not. And in fact, I would say the weak point of all of this is the optical tube. It's not that great. It's not that sharp. It's not the last word in sharpness contrast. And, you know, it's just not terrific. But because the mount is steady and the eyepiece is decent, you can actually use this thing. 
So I had this thing out several times here. It's been in the garage for several months and I've actually made it a part of the standard rotation and that's probably the highest compliment I can give this thing. But in the winter time, I had no problem seeing the three clusters in Auriga, M37, M36, and M38. In the galaxy season, in the spring, I found M65 and M66, M81 and M82, and I saw both parts of M51. As we're getting into late summer, into early fall here, I can see M13, M3, M5. Really, there's a lot that you can see with this thing. And again, it's not great, but it's okay. It's good enough for what you pay for to get you started. And you can decide later if you wanna go further in your astronomy adventures after getting something similar to this. Okay, just so we're clear here, this is not a great telescope. It's okay, it's better than I expected. It isn't much more than that. And really the culprit here is the optical tube. I really wish it wasn't a Bird Jones type design. If this were just a conventional four and a half inch F8 Newtonian, I think I would be telling everybody here to just run out and try to find one of these things. But as it is, we have to live with it the way it is. So if you get one of these, use it up, learn everything you can from it, and try to move on after them. While you are looking through it, use, of course, the low power eyepiece. These things here, uh, you know, yeah. Okay, well, I guess it's time for me to pass this thing on. I found some people I can donate this thing to, and I think it's going to a good place. And I think I just may upgrade it and not give it to them in a Chiquita banana box. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.